Welcome brothers and sisters, welcome to a new video of Triple Chris. <coughs> My name is Michael, I am the founder of Triple Chris and the Righteous Pass Movement Foundation. And today I will talk to you about Great Faith. Where do we see Great Faith in the scripture? In many places, but today I want to focus on a special place that many people Today, many believers today are not understanding, and that is the book of Acts. There we see a fantastic great faith, not only in the bringer of this faith, the apostles, but especially in the message. The message that these apostles are bringing forth to the new believers. If we look at the book of Acts and we see that the apostles went from town to town and in every town they established a new assembly of new believers. Such great faith was there at this time that they were 100% sure if they would come back two or three years later this assembly would still be there. Where do we find such great faith today? In our lukewarm churches? There is no faith. There is only maybe hope, but there is no faith. What was his faith? If we look at what is written in the book of Acts and how the new believers and these assemblies are described, it is so amazing. There it is said, that they have everything in one accord. What does it mean? They were pulling all on one string. That they have everything in common. They were a family. They have come together as a family. Where in our lukewarm churches do we see a family? On the contrary, in these lukewarm churches they are starting to fight one another for positions. That's a great shame. Where is the great face? Of the book of Acts. They had all in accord and everything in common. And then we come to something that most people nowadays would reject and would never accept. They shared resources with one another. They had such great faith in their new life. They were born into something new and they had received a message of power and glory from the apostles and they had so much faith in it that they went home and sold their houses and plots at this time. That was the only great thing they had. They sold houses and plots they had and took the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Such a great face because they knew that these apostles were anointed by the Most High. They had received the Holy Spirit and they knew that the message were true and they had great faith in it. They believed 100% and they were all in. But today, hmm, brothers and sisters, today who, who is willing to sell his property and to lay it at the feet of an apostle? Who of you have ever done this? Nobody would come for us. I, in my over 40 years of experience in the ministry, I have never seen a person who have done this, not even one. And I was all over the world in the ministry, in building communities, in many, many nations. I have never seen one person. So the question is, as it is written in the scripture, when Jesus will come back, will he will find face on earth? And if we look at this, the answer should be no. He will find hope, but he will not find faith. Because faith means that you are all in, powerfully all into the message. And that you are willing to give everything, that you give up your all. These people, the first Christians in the book of Acts, they were willing to give away everything old. Not only that the apostles came out from their jobs and followed Jesus wherever he was going, that's also a pattern to the 144,000. No, he, these 
Christians who were not the apostles, who learned the message from the apostles, who were introduced to the power and the glory of the heavenly kingdom, they went and sold everything of their old lives and they gave it to the apostles so that the message could be spread throughout the Mediterranean Sea, that it could go until Rome, that everywhere new assemblies could be established and new elders be appointed and anointed by the apostles. So they had funds to travel and they also had funds to help the needy because the message of the Lord is the heavenly principles and the heavenly principles are love, mercy and compassion and that needs that you go to your neighborhood and lift up the needy, the nameless and faceless. But how do you do that if you have no resources? And the first Christian believers, they knew that. Even that was not a time of so much uh, financial requirements that it's now. But still, they sold their plots and their houses and laid it at the apostles' feet. That is what I call great faith. Because they were all in, they were completely sold to the message, completely sold to Jesus Christ, completely sold to the kingdom of heaven. And they also had great faith in the people who brought the message to them, who said, yes, we have received the message from the Lord. And Therefore, they laid the money at the feet of the apostles because they knew they could trust them, because the Lord has trusted them also. Now you would say, oh, these people who bring the message today, they are not in direct contact with Jesus. Who is telling you that? From where do you know that the message that these end-time apostles now are bringing forth to you are not inspired by the Holy Spirit and are not coming from the kingdom of heaven? What, can, what results will be there? Are they talking about the kingdom of heaven or are they talking about the world? Do not compare different fruits. If you go to the churches, these people are talking about the world. They are telling you, you will be blessed in your business, you will be blessed in your personal affairs. This is all not the case. The apostles were talking and spreading the gospel of the kingdom. They were talking about kingdom purposes. So now if you find an apostle today, an end time apostle, I guarantee you that he will only talk about the kingdom of heaven and how this kingdom of heaven will come onto the earth now and how heaven and earth will now converge together. He will talk about that and not talk about a coronavirus and not talk about worldly affairs and not talk about worldly things or your worldly business. I know this is tinkling your ears, but that is not great faith. That is only hope. Great faith is in the kingdom of heaven. And you all want to be accounted worthy, brothers and sisters. But how can you be accounted worthy to escape all these things if you have no great faith? So these first Christian believers were completely sold out to it. They were newly born into something new and they sold everything and laid it at the apostles' feet and they supported one another. Also this we do not see anymore. Where in the church would you support your brother that's sitting next to you in the bench? You would not. When the sermon is finished you say, oh, good sermon, pastor. <coughs> Sorry, and then you go home and you forget about your brothers and sisters in the church benches. Where is it that you come together? Where is it that you support one another? Where is your holy place? Without all this, you cannot show forth great faith. So let me put it together. They had everything in one accord. These are the requirements for great faith and there's nothing that you can discuss with me. These are the requirements for great faith. They had everything in one accord. They believed completely in the kingdom of heaven and they were focused on the heavenly kingdom alone. They had all in common. They were all together into it. They were a family community, the family community of heaven, and they were already separated from the world. They shared resources. There was nothing questioning, oh, why do I have to give a donation or why do I have to give a 
uh, uh, give to the apostle or to the ministry or to anything. There was no discussion about that. They went home, they sold their houses, their plots and laid the funds at the apostles' feet because they knew they had to be part into the spreading of the gospel to all the nations. And fourthly, they supported one another. There was true love. The love between brothers and sisters that we do not see anymore today. And these four points are bringing forth the great faith. The faith that you should have. The faith that is required so that you can be accounted worthy to escape all these things. But where do we find this faith? When Jesus comes now, will he find such a faith? And the answer is no. He will find hope. He will find prayer. But he will not find great faith. Because as I told you, in all these many years that I'm serving the Lord, in all these many years, I have never seen even one person doing that. So where is then great faith? Where is giving up everything for the kingdom of heaven? Where are you people who say that they have great faith? Where are you then that you come forth and support an end-time ministry? Where are you people? Where are you people that you share things that have to go through the nations? Where is this one that I, I talk to you and two years later I will find you in the same path of faith? Nowadays, you people, you watch a video and then you run away to another place. This is not faith. This is desperation, brothers and sisters. Desperation and hopelessness. Because you have no insight what is the kingdom of heaven. You do not operate in the heavenly principles. You have no faith. If you would have faith that everything would come through for you and, and you would walk in the same power and glory as the first Christian did. But you don't. You have created yourself a facade. You have created yourself a theater in your lukewarm churches where you have appointed one person to make a, a show for you every Sunday. And then you forget about it. That is not great faith. Great faith can move mountains. Great faith can bring you through all obstacles. Now, if you want to have great faith, you need to have everything in one accord, come together, share your resources without discussion. Don't say, oh, we don't want to give anything. Now, if you not want to give anything away from you, then you are not worthy to be part of the kingdom of heaven or walk in the footsteps of Jesus. What has Jesus said to the rich man in one of his parables? He said, go and sell everything you have and then give it to the poor or give it to the needy. That's exactly what they also did at this time. And then follow me. So are you willing to follow the Lord now, to walk in his footsteps now? What about you people who say you are going into the rapture now? Now, what, what, about, what about your resources that you have? You cannot take them to, to the kingdom of heaven. So what are you doing with them? You just leave them behind and for, for, for lying around? Why are you not supporting the end time harvest workers with it? Where is your faith? You say you are going into the rapture. <coughs> Sorry. Early as now Pentecost or shortly thereafter. And then you are gone to heaven. But if you have that faith, brothers and sisters, why are you not using your resources and then pro provide the resources for the people who will do the end time harvest work here on earth, who will remain behind? Like here at Triple Grace. What is stopping you from using your resources to assist us and to help us so that we can bring in the, the harvest army of the Lord? You know. You know that you go into the rapture. And if you do not know, then you do not have great faith. But if you have great faith, then there is no need anymore for all these resources that you have somewhere lying around. Then you can use it to help the end time harvest workers. Because you also know that the harvest will come in. So that means a few of you people must remain for that work. 
but how will they bring in the harvest if they have no resources? That's the reason why you see in the book of Acts that the people shared resources, so that resources was available, so that the apostle could travel, that they could reach, she could establish new assemblies, that they could show forth great love and mercy and compassion from heaven by helping the needy, the nameless and faceless. Now you people who are going 100% into the rapture, where, where are your resources? You could just give them and help. Help us or other entire ministries. And if you do not know if you go 100% in the rapture, then you have no great faith. Then I tell you, you will not go into the rapture, only with great faith. But where do we find great faith? Where do we find somebody who is willing to go to his bank today, take out, let's say, 10 or $20,000 and lay it at the feet of the apostle? Where do we find such a person? I have not seen any. You can prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Come forth. Do it. Go there and lay it at the feet of, the, of our ministry here at Triple Grace. Show, prove me wrong that you have great faith. But I tell you, as soon as you hear my message, you will not do it. Why? Because you have no great faith. But if you are all going into the rapture as you claim, then a lot of resources will remain in this world doing nothing. Why are you not using these resources? Or at least a part, even if it would only be 10% of it, of these resources, of all the people who go into the rapture, and they would be coming to us so that we can bring in the end time harvest in the sealed tribulation period. We would have all the resources we need, all the resources of this world that you would need to establish all the holy places, the safe havens, to gather the people together, to train them as a royal priesthood, to go into the neighborhoods, to lift up the needy, the nameless, and to win souls, 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 and to bring in the harvest of the ages and the multitude closed and white. We would have enough resources for a worldwide operation. If only 10% of all the resources that these people would leave behind, who are going to the rapture now, would come to us. So then where is your great faith, brothers and sisters? Where is your faith? If you have a 100% faith that you go into the rapture, that you are accounted worthy because of your lifestyle, because of your belief, and because of what you have done, then there is no question that you could give 10% to Triple Grace to help us in the end times, to help us that we can pass through the sealed tribulation and that we can bring in the harvest of the ages from Mount Zion. If you're 100% sure, if you're operating under great faith. But I tell you, I haven't seen anybody who has that great faith. So you brothers and sisters, if you're under my voice and listen to it and you have that great faith, then prove me wrong. Show to me that you can do that. You know where you can get donations towards Triple Chris. You know how you can support the end time ministry that will bring in the harvest of the ages. You know how you can do that. We have PayPal, we have Patreon. There's, you can also make it at the Facebook, at our fundraiser there. No problem with that. But it needs great faith. Are you 100% sure you go into the rapture? If not, then you don't have great faith. If yes, then why are you not supporting the end time apostles who have to continue and not have to, but will continue because they have already agreed with the Lord to continue to bring in the harvest of the ages. Everything is written and all must be fulfilled. Yes, we know that people are going right now. So, but what are you doing with your resources? If you have extra land, why are you not selling it now and lay it at the apostles' feet? Why are you not doing something now to help the end time harvest? Why are you not supporting Triple Grace? Where is your great faith? Just think about it. Go to the book of Acts and read what they have done. You see that everything what I have said is true. And then compare it with your life. Are you willing to do the same? Do you truly have great faith? And if so, then come forth, help us. We need resources, we need support, we need help. 
so that we can bring in the end time harvest because we have to operate worldwide and that needs a lot of resources because we are living in a time that is totally fixated on money. You can't do anything, not even registering a place to, to do the holy work without paying fees for registration and everything. So without resources, it's not possible to make it. And you, you will have, you will leave resources behind that will just go down the drain because you go into the rapture. So what are you doing with your, your obsolete resources? Come forth, lay them at our feet that we can use them. Have faith that the end time harvest will also be brought in. You know that there are more than one rapture. So if this now is the first rapture, what we call the escape, then we have the, the great multitude, and then we have another one. It's a time of trumpets. Everything is written and confirmed in the book of Revelation. Now, if you're going now, already into the third heaven, to be with the Father, then bless us with your resources that otherwise are lying dormant. Because when you have gone, we will have no access to your resources. How will we get them? So you have to give them to us before. You do not donate them to us so that we have the resources to bring in the harvest of the ages. When you have great faith. Do you? Do you have the same faith that the first Christian had by selling their resources and lay it at the apostles' feet? Are you accounted worthy to escape all these things? Would you be willing to give everything away to the needy and follow Jesus? Jesus is taking the first rapture group into heaven. So if you want to follow him, you have to give everything away. But to where will you give it away? Leave it behind? Then you have done no work for the kingdom of heaven. If you donated, or at least a part of it donated to the end time ministry, then you would have done a good work because you would help us to bring in the harvest of the ages. And I think you cannot doubt any of my words. Look at our channel. If you look at our over 1000 videos now, they are all about the same issue. They are all about the end time harvest. They are all about the end time apostles. They are all about bringing heaven down onto the earth. They are all about revival and winning souls. So there could be no doubt that we are one of the end time movements of the Lord and that we are called to bring it into action. But we need your help, especially from these people who are going into the rapture right now. Where is your face? Great faith is required to go there. So compare it with the book of Acts. See how your life is. Think about it. And then I'm waiting. I'm waiting to be proved wrong. I'm waiting for you, brothers and sisters, to show your face. At least a part of your wealth that you still have that will just go down the drain when you go into the rapture. At least a part you can donate to Triple Grace to help us in the end time movement of the Lord. So let me see if there are anybody with great face. I will put the links to Patreon and PayPal in the first pinned comment again. So come for us, be part of it. Show forth that you have great face. Be blessed in the Lord. Maranat.